Okay. They are out there as very unusual hours, and they're a lot of the first responders or a lot of special investigation or specialty positions, which have to be available and can only be filled by certain people. Okay. CDC C members are very rare. Okay. When you actually work in uh, molecular biology, genetics, microbiology, vir uh, virology, virologists are, do not, they're a very small group. Okay. Trust me. I know several of them. Okay. There are not many virologists in the world. <laughs> Okay, for obvious reasons. And trust me, they're a very strange group to, to get me wrong with that. But as a result, what happens if there's an outbreak of the hantavirus? They're called in. They're called in. They have to be available anywhere in the world. Okay, not just, you know, I mean, what happens when Ebola, when Ebola broke out in, uh, Africa, what did, what, who had to immediately go in? The World Health Organization had to emergency call, had to, to call in emergency members of the CDC. The virology and pandemic experts from the CDC had to be called in to investigate it. Okay. They aren't on a 24 hour schedule. They are not on a, I mean, uh, on a, an, an, an eight-hour schedule, they are on a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week seven schedule that their life goes when needed, where needed. Okay? Our special forces. Now, I know, ironically enough, that you don't, and most people don't realize this, but did you know that Delta Force is not actually active duty in that sense? Delta Force Special Forces are not necessarily active duty military. They are past their military prime. Okay? They elect to do it. That's their job. So they get paid for it. Okay? So as a result, they actually um, are compensated like it's a regular job. Okay? Well, all those expenses they have for when they're doing it are considered expenses to the company. So when they get spent, they have to be accounted for in regards to their, um, their regular as regular income to their employees. Okay. So they're an expense. So let's kind of go down some of these. So over time, over time, why do you want to minimize it? Because it's time and a half, so it's more it's expensive. Time and a half. It's time and a half, and it's required pay. Here's the thing that's really interesting about overtime. What are the guidelines for overtime? Anything over 40 hours. Anything over 40 hours, and usually anything over technically 12 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times... If you're over 12 hours in a day for whatever reason, they have to pay you typically for that day overtime. So if you end up on a double shift for whatever reason, now not you're not required to to pay overtime, but a lot of places do pay overtime for anything over 12 hours. Okay. Sometimes that's considered a benefit, but Yes, some places do pay the overtime rate if you're over 12 hours because they realize that a person is not just working a, uh, a regular shift. They're actually working literally almost a full day straight and often without, um, without any breaks. I mean, if there's a medical emergency at a hospital, do those doctors get to go take lunch? <laughs> you know, if if there's a, if there's an accident on on the uh, on the freeway, and you have trauma patients coming in to, through the door, okay, are they going to go? Okay, wait a minute, hold on a second. I forgot. I got to take lunch. So hold on. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't foresee that happening a whole lot. Okay, so 
I just, you know, that's one of those things that's really important is they don't have the regular break schedule. And a lot of times, here's the problem in states like Oregon. What, uh, what are some of the problems with Oregon in regards to its compensation? Anybody know? In what way? In what respect? Well, Oregon has very strict laws about things like its breaks and its lunches. Why do you think oh, we take yeah. make so, it so you have mm -hmm. to take your lunch? Because any any time you work more than I think it's four hours, you have to take a thirty minute lunch. There you go. You have to take it. We have those people who, what happens when you guys are at tax time? It's tax time and you guys have people coming through the door and guess what? According to Oregon, and this is honest, according to Oregon, no matter what, you guys have to stand up and leave. Mm -hmm. That's Oregon law. Okay. That's not us telling you we want you to do this. That's Oregon law. Do you know why that came about? No. Anybody have an idea? Naomi, you have an idea? Uh, no. Okay. What happened is in Oregon, they have a lot of call centers. Oh, okay. Okay, so as a result, what ended up happening is in Oregon, in the call centers, they had people who were working straight through. If you're on a call, sometimes very long calls, they weren't taking a break. Mm -hmm. And then they were not getting their breaks and they were complaining about it that they weren't taking their breaks. Well, that was, they were taking, the employees were taking advantage of them. The other thing, too, is when you first sit down at the computer, what ends up happening? What's the first thing you do when you sit down at the computer? What do you do? Any idea? Let me think about your procedure. When you come in in the morning, what do you do? You sit down at the computer and do what? Log in. Okay. That's a login time. Okay. Well, what was happening is, is calls would start coming in during those times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody would be answering them because the people are still logging in. Okay. So they were complaining that nobody was answering the calls when the first, when they sat down and people were taking, not just, but both sides were taking advantage of it. The company was expecting people to be ready to work and you were supposed to be at your desk ready to work at when the clock started. Well, that means you had to have a login time. So instead, you were now given 15 minutes at the beginning to log in. Okay. So you weren't taking calls until 15 minutes into your shift. Okay. Because you had to have time to log into your computer and get set up. Well, most of the time, what it means is people would come in early, punch in, and sit and go get coffee. <laughs> okay. Have breakfast, whatever it may be. Well, so they started regulating it. Okay. Same reason why you can't punch in until seven minutes before your shift now and all that. All because people were taking advantage of it on both sides. So... It's a pain in the butt. So that's why ours are really regulated in Oregon that aren't regulated in other states. Um, so we have hourly rate, back pay, sick pay, and benefits. Now those are the regular pay, but what are some of the fringe benefits? Okay, let's talk about those. Fringe benefits. Any idea what a fringe benefit may be? Your, uh...
medical. No, no, it's a little bit different than that. Okay. Okay, medical is normally a regular benefit, but the fringe benefits may actually include your medical, but it's normally things like the company car, the employee discounts, things like that. Okay, those are not normal things. It may be the gym membership discount that you get. Okay, those are things that normally you would not get. But medical benefits sometimes are not, that they're, those are generally accepted. Um, yeah. Accepted benefits. But a an additional uh, contribution on an IRA, that would be kind of a fringe benefit. So sometimes you get that additional employee contribution. You know, they put an additional amount in. All right, so they're unusual benefits. Benefits that don't necessarily um, appear as a regular thing. Transportation benefits. There you go. Something that's not that's not a uh, normal um, benefit that you would not normally see from a... Uh... Okay. That was interesting. My watch just turned on my music. Okay. Okay. So fringe benefits are things that do not fall under your normal benefit plan. In other words, they may be uh, subsidized benefits. They may be an extreme healthcare benefit. They may be medical benefits that normally would not fall. Uh, cancer coverage. Some places do offer that. Some places offer uh, a death benefit as a normal one, but they also, some of them actually offer a burial benefit. Okay. And those are good things to have. You know, they're very important. And um, ironically enough, it was great that uh, um, when my stepdad, when he developed cancer, um, this was back in uh, 2000, uh, 2006, he developed cancer. And his employer, he was really close to, they actually gave him a fringe benefit. He was their lead engineer. And this was back in Chicago. And they knew he could no longer work, that it was terminal. Okay. His employer literally said, and it was a family-owned business, and they said, you know what? All of your benefits, we are going to continue to pay all of your life insurances, all of your health care, everything, we're going to continue to pay for you. And that included a death benefit for him. In other words, it had his burial expenses and all that, even though for however long he was alive, um, for those last months, he wouldn't be able to pay the, the benefit, the premiums. They did that for him. That was really cool of him. Uh, of of the company they did that entirely of their own and that was you know like i said that was a fringe benefit from the company that was not normally offered okay so there are sometimes benefits that you don't see as a that you don't normally see in companies okay then other benefits are for cafeteria plans okay let's get into cafeteria plans do you understand what it means by do, you know what a cafeteria is everybody right yes okay cafeteria plans are pretty simple when you go into a cafeteria to get food the idea is you got a whole bunch of things setting out there and you pick what you want it's the same plan the same basic thing for a cafeteria plan in regards to benefits what they end up doing is instead of offering a single plan type for everyone, what they do is they offer a whole bunch of different types of plans from different sources, and you get to pick them. It's kind of like um, how the uh, health marketplace works, okay? When you have the health marketplace, what they do is you apply for the tax credits, and if you qualify for the tax credits, 
then you can kind of apply them how you want. We're going to give you this many dollars, basically. Now pick who you want to get coverage from and what level of coverage you can get based on that. If you want to pay the additional amount, you can, but it's kind of up to you. And so it works like a cafeteria, and it's a Section 125 plan. And they can include whatever you're looking for, sometimes car insurance, sometimes, um, well, a big one, adoption assistance. Okay, that one's a big one for some people who are trying to adopt. It doesn't always get used by a lot of people, but for those people who are trying to adopt, that's a big one. Um, these are other uh, benefits that you normally don't uh, have to get. So in other words, like when you're applying for benefits, they say, so what are my benefits? Okay, and the company will normally list them, right? In this case, it's saying, we're gonna give you this amount in benefits, what would you like to get? And you can get um, a, a uh, dependent care assistance. They have a lot of uh, additional things that qualify, okay? Flexible spending accounts, um, the HSAs, the health savings accounts, group term life insurance, those are a big one. People, a lot of people don't realize just how important like those group term life insurance policies. Now, they are only valid while you're working, but what happens if something happens while you're working? Okay, a lot of people do not think about that. But what happens if something happens to you while you're working? Now, most people are employed, but some of us are getting up there in years, okay? I hate to tell you, I, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be, okay? And what, what would happen if something happened to me? I want Shell to be covered, okay? I want Rihanna to be covered, okay? My baby girl is only one, okay? She just... I want to make sure that she's taken care of. All right. And she may still be in the Philippines, but I don't care. I want to make sure that everything is taken care of for both of them. Well, a group term insurance will be a whole lot cheaper for me, especially if you get it early on. The rates typically don't go up that much on a term term policy. There may be scheduled adjustments for it based on years, but if you started out early enough, those rates pretty much never go up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that could be just a little amount. Well, that's a great thing. Now, granted, if you stop working for the company, it uh, it ends up going away. But here's one thing, too. There are several of them that, depending on if you look at it, those group term policies can be converted into a regular policy if you retire from the company. You have to look at what the conditions are. So there are some that, if you look at, there are great, great benefits. And if you're paying it for, if you're, I mean, I realize now the average is you work for a company for five years and then you move on. But like my dad's generation, he worked for the company for 45 years. Okay. He retired from the company. All right. But those term policies, had he started a term policy back then, it would be worth a fortune now. Because he actually retired from the company so he can continue it. So those are a great benefit. Now, that is what normal people have, insurance-wise, okay, benefit-wise. Let's talk about the big wigs, okay? Okay, you've got Keyman. Keyman Insurance, okay? Anybody know what Keyman Insurance is? Sure, I saw it. There you go, Keyman Insurance is... Well, it's, a, it's insurance for the most valuable people in, in that particular and, operation so that if something happens to them, the, the business can continue. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Because especially in small businesses, think about a small business. The small business typically relies on a select few people. They're usually the ones who started the company. Steve Jobs, do you think he car they carried key man insurance on Steve Jobs? 
Sure. At least initially before they fired him the first time. Okay. I mean, most people don't know Steve Jobs was fired from Apple. Okay. Yeah, Steve Jobs was fired from Apple at one point. Then they hired him back. You know, people are like, what? Yeah, Steve Jobs was fired from Apple. He got into fights with the board because he even, even though he was, you know, major shareholder and everything of the board, they fired him from the board of directors. Okay. So he still owned the shares of the company, but he was no longer on the board of directors. Okay. So what ended up happening is then after a while they hired him back. But what would happen to Apple? I mean, what did happen to Apple when Steve Jobs died? Okay. It went through a major adjustment period, didn't it? Yeah. Tim Cook took over. And no matter what, Apple still had to readjust. They had to prove that, by the way, we can still be Apple. <clears throat> Bill Gates. Bill Gates is getting up there in years. Eventually, Bill Gates will die. Okay? What will happen to Microsoft when Bill Gates dies? It'll keep going. It'll keep going. But will it be the same company? I mean, he doesn't have as much, I'm sure, to do with the company anymore as he used to. <laughs> it's gone way past, you know, him being a major influence in the company, I'm sure. It's gone, it's gone way past what it was. But think about it. Key man insurance is really important because there are key people with a company when it first starts up. Bezos, there's a big one. How about Jim Henson? There you go. Yeah, he, I mean, he died, unfortunately, young, but his, yep. his company kept going. There you go. I mean, think about all of the key people who Amblin Entertainment is still Steven Spielberg. Okay. Okay. He started, you know, E.T. and keeps going, but those movies will cease when Steven Spielberg cannot make them anymore. Okay. But with a company, there are companies which cannot function without, well, they, they can function without because they're going to have to. They're going to have to function without that key person, but it's not going to be able to function the same way. Things will have happened. So they have key people. Yeah. They have incredibly, they're highly compensated people and they're very important to the company. So they have to be tracked. They have to be, um, a, a, they have to be uh, uh, um, compensated in special ways. That's a major one. Okay. Most people don't re realize that. They are not compensated the same way because what happens when you have already got one of the highest salaries in a company? Okay. How are they going to compensate you with benefits? Here, here's a big one. Do you know? Disability. Yeah. Disabilities, things like this. Um, if you already make more money than most small com countries, okay, you think Bill Gates is, you know, so concerned about his disability stuff, considering he has more money than most hospitals. Okay, so that's probably not something that is a big issue to him. So the benefits that he gets from a company is not necessarily the same benefits that you would get. Okay. And so as a result, you have to realize they're not going to be, cons uh, they're not going to be compensated the same way. They're not going to be um, handled the same way and they're not going to be uh, given the same benefits. Okay. So one of the major issues is how do you compensate somebody? Do you give them a car? Okay. Do you think they're concerned about getting a car benefit? 
No. I mean, considering, you know, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and most of them can buy several car companies. Well, a car and a driver is nice. A car and a driver is nice. But you also have then the upper management who, you know, makes several hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, that sort of thing. So maybe it is worth it for them. Right? So getting those sort of things, like what about the people who have, there's another major one that I actually love to rely on is when you have an assistant. Okay. That's one of the major ones that I can't help. I love sometimes having things that I don't have time to do and I give it to Kim in a lot of cases. Okay. Because Frank and I have Kim that we rely on all the time to do our day-to-day -day stuff that we don't have time to do. And uh, we have her during the season and she's in there as a CSA and she does a lot of our things that we need to have done that I don't have time to do. Especially during the regular season. I don't have time to do a lot of those things. So Kim does them. So having an assistant is a major one. Okay. That's, and how is that treated? Now, in our case, she's actually the CSA of the office, but what about those people who have it as an actual assistant to them? You know, the ones you see in the movies where they're basically following around carrying, you know, two cell phones and, uh, you know, think about those people. There are some people I would not want to be an assistant for. Can you imagine some of the upper CEOs of some companies who basically live on a high octane lifestyle and uh, think the world revolves around them and hire and fire people depending on what side of the bed they got up on. Who would you want to have an assistant as a, you know, would you want to be their assistant? Probably not. You know, but so think about it. Is that, that's a benefit to them. Okay. How is that compensated? They may need it as a benefit because that may be something that is something that is with them all the time. Okay. But these are for highly paid executives. Okay. So officers of the company, major shareholders. Okay. Think about that. Now, here's, a, here's an interesting one. What is considered a highly compensated employee? Now, this is for the definition. It may include anything. It's an officer of the company. A shareholder owns more than 5% of the voting power. Okay. An employee who's highly compensated. Officer of the company. Uh-huh. Or how about a close family member of a person described above? Remember, there's a major one here that you can think of. What about the CEO's wife? If it's, well, it could be either way, you know, wife or husband, depending on, you know, whatever. Um, they have, or the kids of the CEO, who's the wild child. Okay, that wild child who needs to have a driver. <laughs> okay, or the kid who goes to school and needs to have security because he is a highly, you know, a highly compensated employee. What about them? Okay, kidnapping insurance. There you go. Kidnapping insurance is a major one. Security. I mean, think about it. Do, uh, now, ironically enough, they're older, so I'm not talking about Ivanka Trump because she actually is in the White House, but let's go back a, a presidential campaign here. Let's go back to the Obamas. Now, number one, Barack Obama was president. 
Now, Michelle Obama was a first lady, so they have Secret Service. What about uh, um, the daughters? They do, too. They, they have security. Do they have anything to do in the White House? No. Nope. They're just related to the president. You know, they're their daughters. They have influence over the president. Okay, that's their position in that sense. They have influence over the president. So as a result, they have to be protected as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a benefit of being in office, they have secret service protection. Okay, mm -hmm. because you cannot have a, a situation where you have um, a just protection for the key person you have to have it for them as well. Okay. And ironically enough, they have assistance. They have everything else. Okay. Because they have to be presentable in that sense. Okay. Most people don't. Let's go back uh, that you remember Jimmy Carter. Okay. When he was president, most people don't realize that when Jimmy Carter was president, he actually had a more famous relative. Do you know who his more famous relative was because he kept ending up in the news? Billy. Billy Carter. Brother Billy. See, you remember. It's awesome. <laughs> Billy Carter was in the news more often because he was the drunk Billy Carter, brother Billy, okay, who was out there, you know, just partying up, getting drunk, redneck kind of, you know. And he had to have Secret Service protection as the president's brother and as a wild child kind of thing. He actually had to be protected. So that was a benefit to him that had nothing to do with his position but his brother's position. So being a close family member of one of the key members or a highly compensated key employee, you actually have to be compensated. You're, you're actually, as a benefit, you are covered because of it. Okay. And a lot of times we don't think about that. And those are all expenses to a company. I mean, face it, you got Bill Gates who is the second most popular person in Microsoft? Okay. You always hear Bill Gates, but right alongside of him, it's the person who turned his life upside down half the time, and now he's, she's everything to him. It's Melissa Gates. Melissa Gates now handles the Gates Foundation and everything, and for a long time, that was his reason he did a lot of things. His wife. And I got news for you. She's got just as much coverage as he does. Security and everything. Okay. But to Microsoft, it's Bill Gates. She doesn't necessarily have as much to do with Microsoft because she really has nothing to do with the company Microsoft. The Gates Foundation, she does. But with Microsoft itself, she has nothing to do with it. Okay, but I can guarantee you Microsoft looks out for her, you know. So, and here's another major reason why. What happens to the shares of a major key, key shareholder? Okay, especially in that case. Who gets the shares if Bill dies? Um, we'll go to Melissa, I would imagine. Goes to Melissa Gates. So that shareholder interest changes to quite possibly the person that you, you've been totally, you don't totally ignore that person, okay? Because tomorrow that person, there's ironically, uh, anybody ever seen the movie Working Girl? Mm -mm. It was a neat movie with Meg Ryan and Sigourney Weaver and Harrison Ford. And in the movie, there's a scene where this guy, he's just basically a complete schmuck, and he's kissing up to Sigourney Weaver, 
and he is just a low life scum at some cocktail party and she is like treating him you know just she's flirting back and being completely nice and meg ryan goes you handled that so well she goes i don't know what i would do i probably would have hit him and she goes this week's senior vice she this week's you know complete jerk next week senior vice president you never know so this week he may just be you know the dirty rotten kind of sounding you know gross kind of piece of something that you don't want to associate with but next week something may happen and that person that you don't want to associate with maybe actually a senior vice president that you have to deal with okay that's the way it works in business it's not kind of like your family you know you can't choose who you work with all right so people who are associated with highly compensated family members or you know highly member highly compensated employees unfortunately in some cases have to be treated with the same level of security benefits and um overall compensation in a sense as key members do ooh Ladies, can you hold on for one second? Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Ladies, I hate to do this, but I have to take a break here for a little bit because um, I have an issue I have to deal with right now. Uh, How many minutes? I'm not exactly sure. It'll probably be about 20 minutes at least. Okay. Uh, so let's do this. Um, it's 1130. Let's take a break until 12. Okay. okay. Till, till 12. Let's do that. And... What will happen is I'll get right back on. If it's not, I'll get on at 12. If it's not solved by then, because it's an issue with my mom. Apparently, she's not doing well right this second. So, okay. so um, let's 